Hi, my name's Jeff Norton. I'm a recovering crack addict. I went to drug court in 2003. Touch it all, saved my life, saved my family. I had been clean four years. I had one relapse. But Judge Doyle was there. He came to my church. He met me at 5 o'clock in the morning so I wouldn't have to go miss work, be late for work. He was there for my wife. He was there for my kid. He did my church services. The man meant good. He might have made a few mistakes. It was a learning process. And he saved my life. And to this day, I cannot tell you, when I was in drug court, I, when he got the, the trouble started, Judge Doyle wasn't there. There was a new judge there. Well, my time was up. I went in front of the judge. He goes, well, you're free to go. You're off. I said, no, I don't want to go. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I made a promise to Judge Doyle that I would get my ear clean before I would leave this program. And I stayed in it voluntarily. He took my drug test just out of respect for Judge Doyle because of what he did, the hours that he put in. He didn't have to help me. I was a free-time loser. I was a drug addict for 20 years. I've been three possessions. Never, I mean, possession of cocaine three times. And he was there. He lied to him, he put you in jail. He screwed up, he put you in jail. When I went to court, the last time they tried to get me out, a guy was there, nothing is drug court now. A guy was there and stood in front of the judge and told him that he'd used heroin. And they told him to get out patient treatment. Judge Doyle was said, Kane County at least a month. And I, me as an addict, I know that's what the man needed because when you go back to it, you need some time to get clean and clear your head. It took me over a year to get my head clear. I hated Judge Doyle. I fought the program every way I could. But after I got clean for six, nine months, I had figured out what real life was about and clear head was about. We had a husband, we had a father. And then I did relapse again. But then I knew what being clean was about. And people cared about me. Randy, Alicia, Skip. Just so many people. And I just prayed to God and thanked Judge Doyle for everything he's ever done for me. I love the man. I'll, if they want to send him to jail, I'd rather do the time for him to see that man go to jail. He is just, for what that man did to so many lives, the time he put in, and what he's going through right now, having to retire, sitting, before that sitting in an administration office, because he couldn't do what he wanted to do for the measly money that he was making, is just pathetic. And for the state of Illinois to spend money and try to put a person like that, cause them pain and relief, I'm just disgusted. If, if I could, to give you an idea of the impact that the program has had during the time when uh, Judge Doyle first started, um, there were 12 people in the drug court, and uh, through his work and the work of the entire team on the Kane County Drug Court, it absolutely took off to where it went from uh, to 67 to 111 to 321 to 730. 736 people were being helped in the drug court. And uh, at the point that the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the GIB uh, started to distract people from the good that they were doing and uh, spending our money uh, to uh, uh, shrink uh, the good that was being done to where it was 279. Uh, now I believe that it's between 250 and 300 people, which again, that is the largest in the state. And so that is very good. But it is not 736. I understand from actually reading some of the newspaper reports that it actually got as high as 900. So um, the impact then, as far as uh, felony cases, where the felony cases were taking off, uh, hit a high in King County of 3,745, uh, shrank down to 2,500, so 1,200 fewer uh, felony cases in King County. And for those of you who are fiscal and financial experts, you know that that is millions of dollars uh, that the taxpayers don't have to spend. That's why, as I, again, I read some of the articles recently about the drug court, when they say that it's it's more expensive to run, in the long run, even if you didn't care about the impact that it has on people's lives, 
if you just wanted to measure it by the pocket fund, if you include all the costs wherever uh, they end up, it's a tremendous savings to the uh, taxpayers of not only the area, but also to the state. In one of the most recent conversations I had with uh, my uh, antagonist, I guess, in the, uh, uh, in the Appropriations Committee, uh, Senator Schoenberg, he said that what he didn't like was that I was bringing charts in. He says, oh, well, I, I, I didn't want to limit your free speech. You know where I come from? The picture's worth a thousand words. And so uh, to see the increase of the number of people being helped and then the decrease, I think that a picture tells the story. Uh, as far as the uh, people sent to prison, you know, if, if it is your child, you want help for that person. And you know, that can be, like you said, Virginia, um, to be a better, a better daughter, to be a better mother, I mean, those are all the things, to be a better son, to be a, a better father. That's what we're trying to do. I don't think that you could do that sitting in a prison someplace, you know? And so uh, fewer people going to jail, more people were getting healed. And frankly, I think that that's what you want your money spent.